Now that we can register, we want an easy way to be able to check a unique email and username. So let's extend our validation class or build onto our validation class uh, to allow us to do that. So the first thing we need to do is work out what we're actually doing here. Um, again, I said in the last video, if you want to go over to the violin docs on GitHub, you'll see how this works and you'll see an example of injecting your database into violin. And that's exactly what we need to do. Uh, but what we're going to be doing is injecting our uh, user model in. So here we're going to create a constructor and we're going to allow a user model to be passed into this. So um, you, I, I'm basically type hinting this. So uh, the only thing that can be passed in on this first argument is a user uh, object. So we need to use code course user user. That's the user model that we've already spoken about. And then we can just say this user equals user and we can create a property up there to hold that. And then in any of the, the validation rules that we create, we can use that user model. So what do we need to do? Let's first of all focus on validating a unique email. So we need to specify a rule that we can add easily to here, like unique email, in order to validate that this is a unique email in our database. So to do this uh, within Violin, all we do is we create a new method and we prepend it with validate underscore and we say unique email, like so. And then in here, we either return true or false, depending on whether this failed or passed. So before we do that, we need to work out how we're actually getting the value, the input and the arguments for this. We're not using input, previous input and arguments. We just need the value, but we need to define these anyway. So value, input and args. So value will contain as long as we add to this unique email, it will contain here, the value that we pass in here. So that means that what we can do is we can do something like if value exists in database return false, that's obviously pseudocode, but that's what we want to do. So to do this, we need to uh, basically use the user model that we passed in. And all we're going to do is say user equals this user where, and this is part of the query builder. Uh, with eloquent, we just say where email equals value. So all this is doing is it's pulling a user from the database. So looking through all of the records to find a user where the email matches the value that's been passed in when we validate. So for example, if I go over to the form and submit tabby at codecourse.com, at the moment it doesn't exist. So the validation here, or well, this value would be tabby at cocourse.com. It would look inside of the users to find if there are any records with the user with the email tabby at cocourse.com. And then what we can do is return true or false if one exists. We want to return false if one does exist because that means this rule has failed. So what we need to do is say return. And we can do this either within an if statement. So we could say if user and we have a count method here which is going to count how many records there are so we can say if user count return false and then down here we could say return true like so so this would work but we can shorten this to say return um false all user count and all this means is say the user count is one that's going to cast that to a bool so that's true and then we're checking if this is not true. So that's it. We're just saying if this is not true that there are users with this email. And that's it. That's all we need to do. We will be adding to this later because we have um, uh, another use for this when we update our profile. But this is as we need it for now. So let's actually test this out and see what happens. And we will actually no, we, we will get an error here because what we haven't done is added a custom error message for this. So this will um, give us a, an error. Oh, uh, we've got another error here. So code course user. Oh, okay, of course. So, okay, let's uh, go back to our start file. Inside of our validator, when we create a new instance of it, we actually now need to pass in the user. So uh, we can do that by saying app user. Remember, we defined that just here. 
So uh, let's go ahead and refresh and hit register. So we get email is required as usual. Let's type in tabby at codecourse.com and hit register. So it all seems okay. However, if this wasn't the case, we'd have to output an error message for our unique email. So what we want to do is we want to add messages. So we're going to say this add field messages. And again, this is all in the violin documentation. So for any email field where we have the unique email rule, we want to output a specific error message here. And that is that email is already in use. And that's it. That's all we need to do. We'll be adding to this in a moment when we did the username. That's it for now. So let's register a valid user. So we'll say tabby at codecourse.com. Type in a username, a password like so. Hit register and you have been registered. So that's all good. We now have a user with the email tabby at codecourse.com. Let's register again with tabby at codecourse.com. Uh, we'll register with a different username and we'll register with a valid password. Register, that email is already in use. So this might be a little bit complicated, but if you do go ahead and read the violin docs, this will make total sense. And it's just an easy way to keep all of our rules in one place. And then all we're doing within here is just saying we want this to be a unique email. So let's move on to do the username part of this now. We want this to be a unique username and it's pretty much exactly the same thing really. Uh, so unique username and let's create that rule inside of our validator. It's the same thing, validate underscore and then the rule name, unique username. We have our value being passed in, any previous input and our arguments. This uh, rule doesn't take any arguments. So to validate the unique username, we can do this all in one line, to be honest. Um, all we need to do is say return if something is false, this user where username is equal to the value that's passed in. So if there's already an Alex or a Billy in there, this will return a, a count. So we're checking that against count. So just running backwards, we're pulling the count for any users where the username is the same as the one passed into the validation. We are casting that to a Boolean. So let's say that uh, Alex did already exist. This would be true. And we're checking if this is not true. So that's pretty much it. We are done with the unique username rule, but we need to add the message that's going to be displayed to the user. So let's add the username and unique username. And we'll just do the same thing. That user name is already in use. Simple as that. So let's check this out. Then we have one record in with an email of tabby at codecourse.com and a username of Alex. So we define the username and the email as the same. When I hit register, that email is already in use and that username is already in use. So by using violin and creating our own, own class, which extends violin, we can create these two methods, which will hook up to our database via the user model, validate as we need, and then it will return the errors that we set by adding field messages. And now we have a registration form, which allows us to protect against duplicate email and username, and it also validates anything else as well. And you can add more rules here if you want or remove them if you don't need them. So now that we've done registration, luckily logging in is a little bit more simple. So in the next part, we're gonna look at how we can log our users in, check that they're logged in, and we can go ahead and remove this register from the navigation once a user's logged in because they don't need to register again.